بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اینڈ السلام علیکم ایوری ون ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس وی آر الیبریٹنگ اپ آن کرپشن اینڈ وی آر آن دا تھرڈ پارٹ وچ از بیسکلی گوئنگ ٹو لک ایٹ دی ڈفرینٹ انسٹیٹیوشن سچ ایز او ای سی ڈی اینڈ دا ورلڈ بینک او ای سی ڈی ایوری ون نوز اسٹینڈس فار دی آرگنائزیشن فار اکنامک کارپوریشن اینڈ ڈیولپمنٹ بیسکلی اے کامیٹی آف اباؤٹ تھرٹی ڈیولپ کنٹریز وچ آر اسٹرائیونگ فار اے بیٹر ورلڈ اینڈ واٹ وی سی از دیٹ کرپشن ٹینس ٹو تھریٹن گڈ گورننس سسٹینیبل اکنامک ڈیولپمنٹ democratic process and fair business practices. Uh, OECD's multidisciplinary approach addresses corruption uh, in uh, business, in taxation, in development aid, and in governance in member countries. So we basically see uh, that OECD has multiple hats and is trying to combat corruption uh, through uh, a very systemic and very scientific approach. Uh, and uh, through a participatory uh, approach is uh, encapsulating Uh, most countries around the world and is sharing uh, whatever uh, knowledge and whatever uh, skill set it has uh, related to anti-corruption and accountability. Uh, OECD has set and it promotes international anti-corruption principles to combat the supply side of bribery, preventing bribery through export credits and denying tax deductibility of drives. So again, we see that it is a, a very scientific approach and again, uh, they are very specialized in basically curbing corruption in those areas where uh, usually uh, underdeveloped countries, uh, national governments cannot, uh, cannot make an impact in that particular area. But OECD uh, has uh, definitely uh, many uh, accolades and based upon them, uh, they are trying to curb corruption uh, at a multiple level. Uh, promoting responsible business conduct, preventing corruption in the public sector and improving governance through uh, development assistance. So uh, again, Uh, it tends to interface more uh, with the public sector, but is also overlooking uh, the private sector and uh, the social sector. On the other hand, uh, when we talk about uh, the World Bank, uh, then corruption leads governments to intervene where they need not. Uh, it undermines government's ability to enact and implement policies where uh, intervention uh, is clearly needed. The areas of intervention basically of the World Bank include uh, environmental regulation, uh, health and safety regulation, uh, social safety nets, and macroeconomic stabilization. So uh, what we see is uh, that in a country like Pakistan, the World Bank uh, has uh, a major stake because they are providing loans, they're providing soft loans. But in return of those loans, uh, then we see that all of these areas uh, have to be uh, calibrated according to, the, uh, according to the research and according uh, to the demands of the World Bank because uh, they are giving soft loans to Pakistan and therefore they want to ensure that those soft loans can be uh, returned and those soft loans are not also not wasted in corruption, so they cover uh, usually these different areas. The causes of corruption are always contextual and rooted in a country's policies and culture, uh, dysfunctional government budgets, inadequate supplies and equipment, uh, delays and release of budget funds, loss of organization purpose and use of public office or private gain. So all of these things uh, are very unfortunate and are a part of uh, corruption and World Bank tends to oversee how all of this can be curbed, especially uh, corruption in the public sector. The opportunity for corruption is a, is a function of the size of the rents under public officials' control and the discretion uh, that official has in al allocating those particular funds. So what we see is that a lot of corruption emanates from the pub public sector. And in that, what we see is the amount of allocated funds with the official and then the funds which are spent. And usually what we see is that uh, we have a two-tier corrupt system whereby first on allocation, uh, there, there would be some uh, corrupt practice involved and then later on, Uh, during its disbursement, we also see uh, that uh, corruption is taking place. Uh, the accountability that official faces for his or her decisions where corruption is systemic, the formal rules remain in place, but they are superseded by informal rules, which again uh, tend to unfortunately promote institutional corruption. There's a great need to curb all of this institutional corruption uh, from the highest levels in Pakistan down to the lowest level. Otherwise, we would not be able to progress and develop in the right particular way. Uh, economic research by World Bank is that corruption may not distort the short-term efficiency of an economy if it merely entails the transfer of economic rents from a private party to a government official. So uh, usually it doesn't have a huge impact if it is uh, merely entailing uh, transfer of economic rents, but uh, otherwise uh, there are huge impacts and uh, there is a great need uh, to curb this particular curse of corruption and bring about transparency and accountability uh, as a way of life. Uh, bribes can theoretically increase economic efficiency uh, if they allow firms to avoid overly restrictive regulations or confiscatory tax rates. And weak public institutions also can lead to uh, slow growth and reduce private investment, which is uh, something which is 
uh, extremely uh, adverse and has a very negative impact on the economy, also on individuals, also on institutions, and also on community at the large. Uh, but overall, we see that the World Bank and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development are working in tandem and are also working with the other international financial institutions like Asian Development Bank, like JICA, like GIZ, like DFID, and many others to ensure uh, that the world can become more transparent, more accountable, less corrupt, and there can be more equity uh, within the economy for everyone at large, uh, so that uh, the globe can prosper uh, on a more equitable level. Thank you so much.